Welcome back. We're still looking at more complicated formulas, more complicated uses of our logarithms and exponential laws. In this case, we're looking at the compound interest formula. This is a very important formula. I mean, it's used in business, but it's also used in everyday life. If you're putting money in the bank, this is a formula you want to know. If you're borrowing money from a bank, likely this is a formula you want to know. Because this tells you, what well, does you figure out the amount of money you end up with based on the interest rates and things like that from the bank. So, let's take a look. What do we got? On the one side, we have PT, P bracket T, which is just the amount of money you have at time t. And actually, before I continue, I should mention, depending on the course, you might see different variables. It might not be a p of t. It might be something else. Depends on what your teacher likes. But the idea is still going to be the same. This left-hand term, our case p of t, is how much time I have at some time t. Maybe it's been a year. Maybe it's been five years. Maybe it's been a few months since I last when I first put my money in. Well, P of T is the time in years. The, the P of T is the amount I have after some amount of years T. That is equal to PO, which is the initial amount I put in. So this is the initial amount of money I either put in or borrowed, depending on the case I'm looking at. And then I have in that multiplied by 1 plus R over N, and all of that is to the power of NT. So, the right hand side is PO times, in brackets, 1 plus R over N, all of that to the power of NT. Not the PO, just the term in brackets is to the power of NT. Great. So what else do we have? PT is the amount we're going to have at some time T. PO is how much we started with. 1 is just the number 1, thankfully. R is our interest rate. The interest rate, and you're putting it as a decimal. Normally you're going to be given as percentage. Your bank's going to tell you you get maybe 1% interest. Well, you want to convert that to a decimal, which always means divide by 100. So when you do questions like this, take the interest rate, divide by 100, that puts it into a decimal, from percentage to a decimal. N, this one can be a little confusing for people. It's how often your interest is compounded, which, what does that even mean? Well, it's how often they actually apply the interest rate throughout the year. So if you're told that they compound it monthly, that means 12 times per year, they actually calculate the interest. They take your amount that you have, apply the interest rate to it. The more often it's compounded, the better. Because that means interest is being applied to amounts of money you've already made. Because when you make money, and you, get, you have some initial money, and you get the interest rate applied to it, that means you have that amount of money and the amount you just made in interest. Well, the next time interest is, comp is actually compounded or applied, it's applied to the original amount plus the amount you've made so far. So the more often that happens, the better for you if you put money in. Um, and actually it's worth noting that that means when you're putting money into a savings account, you're probably going to find it's compounded monthly. When you're borrowing money from a bank, you're going to find N is compounded more often, probably daily. Because the more often it's compounded, the more money ends up coming out. So if you're putting money in a bank, you probably get less compounding than when you're taking money from a bank. So again, N is this compounding. How often in a year it is basically the interest applied. The compounding times. And finally, we also have T. T is the number of years it's been. So this will let you actually calculate, if I put in an initial amount of money, and it's at some interest rate R, using this formula, if I'm told I'm compounded monthly, N is 12, well, if I'm going to invest for three years, I would plug all those numbers in and actually be able to figure out how much money I have in three years. Or if I was borrowing money, I could do the same thing. Figure out how much I'll owe in three years. Of course, if you're making regular installment payments or if you're putting money into your savings regularly, this formula doesn't quite apply. It gets a little more complicated, but it still lets you start seeing how your banks are going to be making money off you or you make off them. So, let's take a look. In our case, we're going to apply this and actually try to solve for this R. So we're assuming we know how much money we started with, how much money we have at some certain time, how often it's compounded, and how long it's been. We want to figure out what the interest rate must be to have made this all happen. But I'm going to use general variables. So what do we want? We want R. Well, I've got to start getting that on its own. And I can think if I take the lawn of both sides, it's not helping me right now because I have this PO term in front. 
but if I get this all on its own, I can at least get rid of this exponent. I'm kind of working my way in towards the brackets, just like in module one, get rid of the term in front of the brackets, then I can deal with the brackets. So I'm going to divide both sides by this PO term just to cancel it out on the right hand side here. So P of T all over P O. And then I'm left with 1 plus R over N to the NT. Still want to get R on its own. Now I somehow have to get rid of this bracket. Well remember, we've been looking at using N or our lawn or log to the base something to get rid of a power. So that's what we're going to do. Take lawn of both sides. Lawn of both sides. Why? So I can bring this NT term down in front. So I have lawn of P of T. And this is going to be a messy one. I'm warning you now as we do it, this is going to start looking pretty bad. Because we got NT in front all times lawn of 1 plus R over N. Great. Well, if I'm going to want to get R on its own, I've got to get rid of this term in front. If I'm going to somehow get rid of this, X, this lawn, well, got to get rid of the NT first. So divide both sides by NT. Dividing this whole term by NT. As I said, it's getting a little messy. Because now I have ln of P of T over, right, this is the amount at some time T, this is the initial amount, all over NT. And that's equal to ln of 1 plus R over N. But I still want to get R ultimately on its own. Somehow I have to get this R on its own. Well, what do I have? Lawn on this side. I've got to get rid of this lawn so I can get into this term here. Well, just like before, if I want to get rid of a lawn, I put everything to the power of e. And that's what I'm going to do. Both sides to the power of e. So this is e to the power of all of this, and this is e to the power of all of this, because that's going to cancel on the right-hand side. And I'll actually jump over here, as always, switching markers. So I've got this really ugly left-hand side at the moment. e to the lawn of p t over p o. And in some cases you might already have these as numbers, so you might have been able to simplify this down, but maybe not. In our case we just have the general variables. So now we have 1 plus r over n. Now to solve for r, this is something we're more familiar with, we're back in business, we just have to follow the usual rules. Sure, this is some really big ugly term, so what? If we had these values, we could calculate a number and take ln of that, divide by n over t. If we had those numbers, this would be e to some number, which is itself a number. So this could be potentially simplified down, but let's keep going. What we're going to do is subtract 1 from both sides to cancel out this one. So e, whew, a lot of writing every time. And all of that minus 1 equals r over n. Want r on its own, multiply both sides by n. And basically I'm just rewriting this left hand side and I get this big huge mess for my value of r. Which remember was just my interest rate as a decimal. all equals r. So this would let me calculate the interest rate. I mean, this might not be what you're using this kind of formula for, but it was a nice example of applying it, all these rules we learned. And you saw, I took the lawn of both sides and then eventually took the e of both sides. Using lawns and exponents is just a tool to help us work our way towards solving what we want. And ultimately, that's what we got. Just following the math. Thank you.